I'm G, and welcome back to the last ever season one recap and review of HBO's The Last of Us. The Last of Us is an American post-apocalyptic drama television series created by Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann for HBO. Based on the 2013 video game developed by Naughty Dog, the series is set 20 years after a mass fungal infection caused by a mutation of cordyceps, which sparked a global pandemic. The infection causes its victims to transform into hostile, cannibalistic creatures resembling zombies. The series follows Joel, Pedro Pascal, a smuggler tasked with escorting the teenager Ellie, Bella Ramsey, across a post-apocalyptic United States. A pregnant woman, Anna, flees pursuing infected by hiding in a house. The creature breaks in and bites Anna as she gives birth to Ellie. Sometime later, they are found by Marlene and a group of fireflies. Anna asks Marlene to kill her and take Ellie back to Boston, Massachusetts. Marlene hesitantly kills Anna and walks away with Ellie. In the present, in Salt Lake City, Utah, Ellie acts distant to Joel until she sees a herd of giraffes. Joel tells Ellie they can return to Tommy's community in Jackson, Wyoming and forget about their destination. Ellie says after all that they've been through, she wants to finish their journey. Later on, Joel opens up about a suicide attempt after Sarah's death and requests Ellie tell some jokes. They are ambushed by Firefly soldiers, who capture Ellie and knock Joel unconscious. After Joel awakens in a hospital, Marlene explains the doctors are preparing surgery on Ellie to extract samples of her brain to study her immunity to cordyceps, a procedure that will kill her. Marlene orders two soldiers to escort Joel out of the hospital. Joel subdues and executes the two soldiers and takes one of their rifles. He moves through the hospital to the operating room, killing most of the Firefly soldiers and the lead surgeon operating on Ellie. He takes the unconscious Ellie and leaves the hospital. Marlene intercepts them in the parking garage, stating there is still time for Joel to do the right thing, but he shoots and kills her. When Ellie wakes up when they are driving out of the city, Joel lies, telling her the Fireflies had found other immune people and were unable to create a cure, and he quickly left with Ellie as the hospital was attacked by raiders. After their car breaks down, they hike to Jackson. Ellie expresses her survivor guilt, and at her instances, Joel swears his attack about the Fireflies is true. Ellie says, okay. So, I'm a little surprised by this finale. Like, the the premiere of the show was an hour and a half long, and like, really, really like, high stakes, and there was a lot of like, stuff going on. But I found in this episode, which is like the season finale of a pretty big show, I would say, I was sort of underwhelmed. Like, I'm not saying it was a, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't a bad episode. I really enjoyed it. But I thought the stakes were going to be a bit higher. I thought maybe there'd be fight scenes with some infected, maybe. I was, I've been more tense and like stressed out watching other episodes than I was with this one. I had seen the hospital scene from the game sort of in clips on TikTok before. So I sort of knew what we were getting into with this episode. But I thought maybe the acting would be like a step up. Like they would really dramatize it to be good TV. I mean, it was, it was still good TV. Yeah, I just, I kind of, I kind of wish there was a little bit more going on. It did feel kind of short. It was 43 minutes long. I think this is probably the shortest episode yet, um, which is a little strange for a finale of a show. And I feel like the majority of people were sort of underwhelmed with it, but it gave us some really nice character in depth. So I took some notes while I was watching it. So I'm going to share them with you now and sort of break them down and stuff. So why was Anna out in the wilderness running around alone while she's in labor? I know that she was being like chased and stuff, but in order to be chased, she would have had to leave the safe location she was at to get there. She's also just a trooper to give birth while fighting off an infected. That scene was crazy. That made me very scared because that stuff's scary. I mean, it, it was sad when Marlene killed her just because, I don't know, you don't get that much of a experience with your baby. Like, I wish they had a little bit more time together to bond and stuff. I don't really want to know the logistics of transporting a new baby all the way to Boston, especially where Anna said she hadn't fed Ellie. I don't think baby formula is going to be sort of widely available in this post-apocalyptic world. And I also don't want to know just the logistics. They had, they had no baby supplies with them. I don't know if maybe they were, they were closer to like a, another firefly spot where they could go and get stuff. On the way there, how, how did they pull off carrying a baby with them? How, how did that work? How did that work? So jumping forward to the present day, uh, I was really happy to see that Joel's overall attitude, it seemed like lighter in this opening and man, just like poor Ellie was so out of it. I felt, I felt horrible for her. She's been through so much 
especially in the last episode, I feel like all of her innocence is just gone. It was almost a parallel to how the beginning of the show, like Joel was very like reserved and quiet and grumpy and Ellie was all chatty and jokey and like moving around and just being a kid and stuff. And I, it felt like a role reversal almost. Oh my God, the amount of reflections I've seen from people on the last, what Ellie went through in the last episode was crazy. Like I can't imagine going through all that at age 14. I mean, being a 14 year old teenage girl is a traumatic enough experience as it is, but when you throw it into a post-apocalyptic world and like a crazy cannibalistic preacher tries to kill and rape you, like I just, I cannot imagine what that would do to your psyche at such a young age. I also noticed that there's probably been a big time jump between episode eight and nine. Uh, it was winter last episode, or at least it was winter where they were, but I feel like the weather isn't that drastically different. I feel like if they had walked from like Florida to Maine, maybe it would have been more of a drastic weather change, but I think they're just sort of going west state by state. So I don't, I don't think it's that crazy. But anyways, there must have been a time jump because it was winter and now they're walking around without jackets on. The scene in the abandoned building, I absolutely loved the lighting choice. Like the red orange like tarps that were just casting all this like gorgeous, gorgeous like dark red light on everyone. And just like the, how it made them like really stand out against like sort of the dark gray drab background. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was beautiful. This is literally one of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen. Though it may be like at its core, like a zombie apocalypse survival show to the general public, the cinematography and just like the little detail shots has just been absolutely stunning. I'm really happy that they had a real giraffe. I've seen some of the behind the scenes footage clips from this and it was actually a real giraffe that they had they were feeding. Uh, I think later in the episode when it's the family of giraffes sort of down in the baseball field I think they were in, that was probably CGI, but the close up scene with the giraffe and Joel and Ellie was a real giraffe and that's so cool. Oh my God, that's so cool that they got a real giraffe. Um, and that was a really good scene and I loved the look on Joel's face when Ellie was just smiling and laughing and feeding the giraffe leaves. It's it's so nice to see him transform from like the first episode meeting Ellie to now where you can tell he cares so much about her and even though I don't ever think he would admit it, thinks of Ellie more as a daughter now or at least sees himself as a father figure to her. I also really love the way that this show has like nature reclaiming the cities. I thought this episode, the abandoned city they were in was absolutely gorgeous. I keep saying gorgeous and absolutely, but there's just no words to describe how beautiful it is. Especially if you think of like how those cities look in a non-apocalyptic thing, very like industrial, structural, skyscrapers, gray and silver and black colors versus when nature's like reclaimed those cities and it's like these luscious green colors and all these different plants and stuff. It's absolutely beautiful. While Joel and Ellie are on that sort of balcony overlooking the city, I think they do have a callback to one of the lines in episode two. Um, I think it's a similar thing when Joel and Tess and Ellie are first escaping the Boston QZ or whatever. Q I think they were in the Boston QZ. Ellie says a similar line, like it's got its up and ups and downs but that's like one hell of a view. And she says that again in this episode, I think it's a really nice callback to sort of the previous episodes and what the two of them have been through together. I thought Joel's confession to Ellie about how he tried to kill himself was a really touching scene and sort of towards the end where he was gonna say that he like found something to keep him alive. I was really hoping he was gonna tell Ellie that cause I think she's just at a place mentally where she would just need to hear that, that like, she's the reason he's you know starting to have a better outlook on life almost because he's like a happier person and stuff he also talks about sarah a lot in this episode and it's really nice to see him talk about her in a happy light rather than in sort of a like a i'm not gonna say a negative light because he never spoke about her negatively but i just mean in like a he did he didn't want to talk about her because just the wounds were too deep when they're walking through the city to the hospital, Joel does a really good job of doing like the very fatherly, like distract your daughter from being sad. My dad's done that before where, you know, I'm like in a shitty mood or whatever. And he'll be like, hey, like blah, 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 blah. Can you do this? And it like, it takes you out of the state that you're in and gives you a task. He like gave her the task of telling jokes cause he knew that it would be good for the both of them and good for her to distract her from just being like trapped inside her mind. Probably horrible flashbacks of everything she's been through. So by the time the fireflies attack Joel and Ellie, 
We're at the 20 minute mark for the episode. So like that's basically halfway through. And I was really surprised at how they were gonna try and pull this all off in 23 minutes. It was really nice to see Marlene return. Um, we haven't really seen her since the first episode. So I don't know, it's, it's good that she survived, I guess. I mean, ultimately, I think she's supposed to be sort of a villain to us maybe a little bit because you know she wants to kill Ellie to harvest her brains but I get I get her backstory now that Anna wanted Ellie's immunity probably to be used for good and that not doing that wouldn't be like not fulfilling her purpose in life but like I don't think ultimately Ellie was brought into the world to be immune to the cordyceps she was brought into the world to be a kid and be like loved and stuff and grow up so I I don't know like I get what Marlene was trying to do and like trying to protect Joel from seeing Ellie before she dies because she probably knew know how that would go but I also like man she was gonna kill Ellie we love Ellie another sort of question I had was just sort of like the timeline of the show um because some of the episodes sort of pick up where the last ones leave off but this one felt like there was a time jump as I said before so I'm just wondering what like the overall timeline of the show was um luckily since the first season's over i'm gonna attempt to play some of the game now pretty much up to where the show finale ends uh so maybe that'll give me a bit more sense but if you know sort of the the gaps between the episodes please let me know so i can sort of make a timeline in my head of how long the show actually was in universe when the Firefly soldiers were escorting Joel through the hospital to take him out on the highway, I really thought we were gonna get like a daredevil hallway scene where he'd be like beating the shit out of the two guys like in the hallway. They did it in the stairwell, but it wasn't as like daredevil -y as I expected it to be. I mean, Joel's not daredevil and I don't think he has like daredevil level fighting skills. Um, but I thought it'd be more of a fight, but he pretty much just gets the gun, kills them both, and then just goes on a murder spree through the hospital. I really liked the artistic choice that they did to have the gunshots really quiet and have like sort of ambient music playing louder than everything. Uh, I think it's a really good reflection of sort of Joel's headspace at the time. Like he wouldn't be focused on the gunshots. His focus is finding Ellie and saving her. I think that was a really, really awesome directorial or maybe that was a decision made in like post-production or with the music team or whatever. But I, I really, really enjoyed that. Cause yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone really loves the sound of gunshots. So it was, it was nice to have some music sort of drowning that out. I also think the Fireflies might have studied at like the Stormtrooper Gun Academy. Cause they were, they were shooting at Joel and it's not like he was like moving a whole lot. Like he was pretty much walking in a straight line, but they still weren't able to hit him, but he hit them accurately every time. So I think future Fireflies should maybe not train with Stormtroopers. I mean, I, I know that's, that, that's a joke. That's a joke. I know that not shooting a gun is hard. I've never shot a gun, but I know that shooting a gun is probably hard. And they were in the dark and stuff, but still, they could have tried a little bit harder. <laughs> not that I wanted Joel to get shot, because he barely made it through getting stabbed. And Ellie is definitely not a certified LPN, so she does not know what she's doing when it comes to stitches. I mean, luckily they're in a hospital, so I'm sure if he did get shot, he'd be able to patch himself up or have Ellie patch him up once the anesthesia wore off. That was a little tangent. At first I was really surprised that the elevator at the hospital still works. Uh, but then I remembered that like hospitals have really good generators. Um, back in September, there was a huge hurricane that sort of hit the area where I live. And I think a lot of people were without power for like a week or whatever, but I don't think the hospital lost their power at all. Cause I think they have like an insane amount of generators or something obviously to keep people alive because people are on like life support and whatever and like you can't lose power at the hospital but it surprised me that those generators were still up and working like almost 20 years after the outbreak started but i mean it was a really nice scene with just joel carrying ellie in the elevator ellie in the elevator so then we get to the car scene and joel is obviously trying to protect ellie from what he did because he killed a lot of people and killed a doctor and killed Marlene to save her. And I don't really think that he would want her to have that on her conscience. And I don't think she could live with that. Marlene is sort of the one who rescued her and then obviously, as we found out, like took her from her mother as a baby to be saved. So I don't I don't think Joel would want to tell Ellie that even if like the 
what happened in episode eight had happened. I think the line he says when he says, I'm taking us home was really nice. It's not like he said, I'm taking you home. Like we're going to my home. Like he said, I'm taking us home. Like they're, they're a family now. They're, they're a little family. And then we also get a little flashback to when Joel was killing Marlene and he was just sort of, he was, he was brutal with it. Just like the gunshot to the head, even though she was already bleeding out and he could have just left her to bleed out. He just sort of shot her and ended all that. Yeah, and that's really all the notes I took during this episode. So as I said, I'm gonna attempt to play the game. I don't own a PlayStation personally. I'm pretty sure it's available for PC through Steam or whatever. So I'll play that. Maybe, maybe I'll even make videos out of me playing that. I'm really not good at video games. If you've seen me play the Evil Dead game on Hail to the Deadites, you'll know that I'm not very good at video games. But I, I really want to play this game and sort of see how it compares to the show. I know the game came first and it's probably also like the better of the two because it's more authentic to the stories that the writers wanted. But I've really enjoyed the show personally knowing what I know about the game. Uh, I love Pedro Pascal. I thought Bella Ramsey was fantastic. Just everything about the show was so wonderful. There were really no sort of pitfalls for me when it came to like watching it or like studying up on stuff for it and being able to do these videos. I found I always had something to say. I mean, I know the episode seven, I didn't really have that much to say, but I found something to say. And I think that's sort of the amazement this show brought to the world. Like, it's crazy. It's a really amazing show. I cannot wait for season two. I'm pretty sure they're going to start filming this year and it'll probably be out probably around the same time this year, like start in January-ish and then probably go till what month are we in? March? So probably a similar season length or whatever. And I, I can't wait to see what they do with this story. So that's gonna be all for the very last recap and review of season one of The Last of Us here on Infamous Virus. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me and sharing your thoughts on the show. I've had a ball covering it and I hope you've had a ball watching these videos and watching the show itself. There's gonna be sort of a week off and then right after that on the 26th, we're gonna be covering Yellow Jackets weekly on the show. If you've seen other videos. I absolutely love Yellow Jackets. I cannot wait to cover season two on here. And if you haven't seen season one, you've got like two weeks as of the day I'm recording this to watch season one and get it under your belt and be all ready for season two for the recap and review show on here. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay groovy.